This is a banger of the question. At first glance, this deeply nested radical looks almost impossible to solve. But its solution is one of the most elegant pieces of high school mathematics I've ever seen. Our first instinct might be to square both sides repeatedly to eliminate the radicals. This is a trap. It would lead to a horrifying eighth-degree polynomial. We need a more refined strategy. Before we do anything, let's establish the possible range of values for x. This is a critical first step. Since x is the result of a principal square root, it must be non-negative. This implies that 2 minus the square root of 2 plus x must be greater than or equal to 0. Rearranging this, we find that 2 must be greater than or equal to the square root of 2 plus x. Since both sides are positive, we can square them without changing the inequality. This gives us 4 is greater than or equal to 2 plus x. And subtracting 2 from both sides reveals our upper bound. x must be less than or equal to 2. Combining our conditions, we have a tight bound. x must lie between 0 and 2, inclusive. This is the key that unlocks the entire problem. Now that we know x is between 0 and 2, we can make a substitution that is perfectly suited for this domain. Let us define x as 2 cosine theta. As theta ranges from 0 to pi over 2, 2 cosine theta traces all values from 2 down to 0. This substitution perfectly parameterizes our domain. This substitution is chosen specifically because it interacts beautifully with the cosine half-angle identities. The twos under the square roots in our problem are a massive clue. Now, let's substitute this into the equation, working from the inside out with full detail. First, we attack the innermost term the square root of 2 plus x. We substitute x with 2 cosine theta. Our next move is to factor out the common factor of 2 from inside the radical. This gives us the square root of 2 times the quantity 1 plus cosine theta. This structure is perfect for the half-angle identity. Let me show you exactly how this works. The half-angle identity comes from the double-angle formula. Cosine of 2 alpha equals 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. Rearranging this, we get 2 cosine squared alpha equals 1 plus cosine of 2 alpha. Now, if we let 2 alpha equal theta, then alpha equals theta over 2. Substituting this in, we get 2 cosine squared of theta over 2 equals 1 plus cosine theta. Now we can replace 1 plus cosine theta with 2 cosine squared of theta over 2. Multiplying 2 times 2 gives us 4, so the expression becomes the square root of 4 cosine squared of theta over 2. Since theta is in the first quadrant, theta over 2 is as well, making its cosine positive. Therefore, we can confidently drop the absolute value, simplifying to 2 cosine of theta over 2. We substitute this back into our main equation. Now for the next radical. We focus on this new innermost term. Following the same pattern, we first factor out the 2. This time we have 1 minus cosine. We need a different half-angle identity. For 1 minus cosine, we use the alternate form of the double-angle formula. Cosine of 2 alpha equals 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. Rearranging, we get 2 sine squared alpha equals 1 minus cosine of 2 alpha. If we let 2 alpha equal beta, then alpha equals beta over 2. This gives us 2 sine squared of beta over 2 equals 1 minus cosine beta. Now we replace 1 minus cosine of theta over 2 with 2 sine squared of theta over 4. Again, 2 times 2 equals 4 giving us the square root of 4 sine squared of theta over 4. Since theta over 4 is in the first quadrant, its sine is positive. 
The expression simplifies to 2 sine of theta over 4. Plugging this result in, our equation simplifies even further. We're on the last radical, but we have a sine where we need a cosine. We use the cofunction identity to convert the sine back into a cosine. This identity says that sine of alpha equals cosine of pi over 2 minus alpha. This works because sine and cosine are complementary functions. When two angles sum to 90 degrees, the sine of one equals the cosine of the other. Applying this identity to sine of theta over 4, we get cosine of pi over 2 minus theta over 4. Substituting this back, the equation transforms, putting it back into a familiar form for our final simplification. We again factor out the two. We recognize this pattern again, 1 plus cosine of an angle. Using the half angle identity again, 1 plus cosine of pi over 2 minus theta over 4 equals 2 cosine squared of half that angle, which is pi over 4 minus theta over 8. Substituting the identity, we get the square root of 2 times 2 cosine squared of pi over 4 minus theta over 8. Multiplying 2 times 2 gives us 4. The argument inside this cosine is also in the first quadrant, so the square root simplifies cleanly, and the entire nested radical collapses to this single, beautiful term. Now we have two expressions for x. Equating them will allow us to solve for the angle theta. On one hand, x is 2 cosine theta by definition. On the other, it's 2 cosine of pi over 4 minus theta, over 8 by derivation. Since both angles are in the first quadrant where cosine is 1 to 1, we can equate the arguments directly. This gives us a linear equation for theta. Adding theta over 8 to both sides and combining the theta terms. This simplifies to 9 theta over 8 equals pi over 4. Multiplying both sides by 8 ninths to isolate theta, we get theta equals 2 pi over 9. The last step is to substitute this angle back into our original definition for x. We defined x as 2 cosine theta. Now we substitute our calculated value of theta, and there it is. The exact solution to our nested radical nightmare, x equals 2 cosine of 2 pi over 9. Before we celebrate, let's verify this answer actually works. 2 pi over 9 radians is 40 degrees. The cosine of 40 degrees is approximately 0 0.766, making x about 1.532. This value sits comfortably within our required domain of 0 to 2. But we must also verify that this value actually satisfies the original equation. Let's substitute x equals 1.532 into the right-hand side. Working from the inside out, 2 plus 1.532 equals 3.532. The square root of 3.532 is approximately 1.88. 2 minus 1.88 gives us 0 0.12. The square root of 0 0.12 is approximately 0 0.35. And finally, 2 plus 0 0.35 equals 2.35, whose square root is approximately 1.53. Perfect. We get back essentially the same value we started with. Our solution truly satisfies the original equation. Let's reflect on why this approach was so effective. The problem, expressed algebraically, was a nested nightmare. But by representing x trigonometrically, we unlocked a structure that perfectly matched the half-angle identities. This transformed the problem, causing the nested radicals to collapse into a single, elegant term. It's a beautiful example of how choosing the right perspective 
can unlock a solution that would otherwise seem impossible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this solution, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more elegant mathematics.